Hello, my name is uh, Vanessa Zamora and I'm working in the Fraunhofer ICT Berlin. Um, I would like to give you the most uh, cordial welcome uh, to this first uh, session of the webinar in Optical Interconnects We Cross. And this uh, seminar is organized by the Dr. Henny de Schroda and the PR team of ICTM. The topic that I would like to share with you uh, today is related to unachieved microbottle for biosensing applications. The motivation to explore uh, 3D uh, microresonators uh, like uh, microbottles is because they are uh, powerful uh, sensors to be able to detect a uh, low concentration of biomolecules which are mainly linked to early diagnosis of diseases. However, the main obstacles of these uh, microstructures are their optical coupling approach, yeah, that typically is uh, using uh, very fragile fibers, and of course their integration in a practical way. A possible solution is to combine the use of photonic integrate uh, circuits with uh, semi-automatic ensembling processes, which offer uh, high scalability. In relation to the healthcare system, uh, population density in the world has increased every year which had led to a significant demand for better prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of diseases. For example, uh, we know very well um, cardiovascular disease uh, are leading the mortality rate has shown in the global study realized by the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation in the University of Washington. Also, New diseases like uh, COVID-19 that had changed uh, drastically our lifestyle urgently need new sensing technologies that should offer fast and reliable diagnostic results and at low price. Diagnostic tests for infections and automatic disease are based on innovative cytokines determination in cellular stimulation and says. However, they are extremely expensive and needed special equipment uh, with very low detection limits around a picogram per milliliter. In the cytokine determination, uh, the sample needs to be previously prepared and then measured between 24 hours in a clinical laboratory. The typical uh, laboratory uh, methods are the uh, well-known ALISAT uh, with multiple washing steps and the microarray technology that combined electrochemical luminescence with a high accuracy dispensing uh, tools. Both approaches uh, present um, precise quantification of multiple cytokines where uh, high qualified personnel is needed and also a uh, long time for delivering result is uh, critical. Based uh, on this uh, issue that we have in the healthcare se sector, we propose a solution based on a compact and high sensitive analysis device where we can uh, use uh, innovative uh, technology based on uh, photonic micro, uh, micro bottles has sensors. A research project uh, called PolvoSense was proposed and uh, with the main targets. Uh, the first target is to define integrate web guides on a chip for optimal coupling of micro bottles. Uh, these structures uh, with high sensitivity can be ensembled into a practical optofluidic chip, 
With this cardish, uh, of course, uh, we can uh, detect uh, four types of cytokine simultaneously, and we can use just a few drops of sample. The results can be in 20 minutes. Uh, to reach the uh, low detection limit uh, necessary for these cytokines, uh, we also uh, had proposed to uh, develop a biochemical enhancement method. Also, uh, here is important to have a retail system where it should be uh, cheaper and also be able to uh, measure uh, the desired uh, cartridge with the bottle resonators. In this talk, uh, I would like to focus mainly in the ensembling of these bottle resonators. Uh, first of all, uh, we will uh, we need to understand uh, the structures of micro bottles. Uh, micro bottles have a specific uh, geometry that uh, allows the uh, confinement and along the um, along the structure of the bottle resonator. Uh, here we can find uh, two different kind of mods. This, this is the light that is uh, coupled to this uh, structure, and the modes are uh, split into azimuthal modes and as, uh, as axial modes. Uh, here we see that these uh, these modes are uh, on the surface of the of the bottle resonator, which uh, can be able to uh, use it for sensing approach. Typically, uh, these micro cavities or microstructures they are used for um, for uh, to create uh, lasers and also uh, in the application of uh, quantum technologies. But uh, these structures are not explored uh, in the uh, biosensing area yet. And that is what we would like to, to do in this, um, in this project. The important uh, parameters for these uh, microcavities is to have uh, the calculation of the uh, field distribution of the mods, also the sensitivity and the detection limit. For example, we can see it that we had a strong interaction with the external medium with the first uh, two modes of this microcavity. Also, we see the, that the radius of the microcavity had a strong influence in the sensitivity. For example, uh, for uh, a radius around uh, 100 micron, we can uh, get a Q factor of 10 to power 2 6 and then a sensitivity around to uh, 24.6 uh, nanometers per um, refractive index units. Uh, after to analyze the uh, sensing properties of the um, micro bottles, we need to define the fabrication process. What we did is, is to, um, to define a soften and compress process uh, that is, is made using by um, a splicing tool that is available in the telecom uh, market. Uh, here uh, we uh, use glass, uh, glass optical fibers from the telecom market and we um, apply uh, this method in order to get a parabolic profile micro resonators. Uh, in this slide uh, we can see uh, three different kind of uh, micro bottles. Uh, with different uh, with different profile and also different radius. We see, for example, uh, that there is a high reproducibility. Uh, for example, we can uh, fabricate 12 uh, samples, and from this sample, we can get a tolerance of 0.9 microns when we would like to 
um, fabricate a bottle with a diameter of around uh, 180 microns. And also we see that uh, in the fabrication, uh, we see that the uh, splicing step had a linear effect as a function of the, dia of the uh, resulting diameter of the micro bottle. After the fabrication of bottle resonators, we need to know what, uh, what is the optical response of them. Uh, we use a standard, uh, a standard setup and also uh, a standard readout element, a uh, fiber taper with diameter of three microns. We use uh, these two um, these two elements, and uh, we uh, we can uh, get the spectrum of these micro cavities, as is uh, shown in the slide. For example, also we see it that uh, depends of the position of this um, coupling element, this fiber, we can get a different uh, different spectrum. Here is the, the typically a spectrum. This is this high density resonance that we have, that typically is used for a laser, and um, and then uh, we would like to use uh, this kind of resonance to tracking them, and then uh, to decide if we can detect uh, the cytokines. The main challenge uh, of this technology is to have a reliable a uh, coupling element. Then practically a fiber of three microns is not uh, the best option uh, to, to use it uh, uh, to create this kind of uh, sensing platform. Then uh, we decided to uh, use integrate web guys. Uh, in collaboration uh, with two uh, institutes, uh, we designed and fabricate um, the web guys that we used uh, for, for coupling the light to the micro bottles. We have acceptable, um, acceptable transmission values of these uh, web guys, and we see that narrow web guys can be the best candidate to uh, couple uh, light uh, to the uh, micro bottle. After first coupling experiments with uh, micro bottles and wet guide, uh, it is important to know the spectral response of them when they are covered with the uh, biocutting layer. This layer provides uh, the specificity for the detection of the desired cytokines. The microscope pictures on the left side show the biocotton micro bottles with and without washing step. A difference in diameter is observed here due to the um, extra biomaterial on the surface of the bottle. After washing, the micro bottle with the typical um, diameter was measured in air and water. Here, we observe that the Q factor, that this is the parameter related to the sensitivity, is preserved higher. And that is around 10 to power uh, two seats. Uh, also, uh, uh, to, to develop the biorecognition uh, process to create this bio layer, uh, we had a collaboration also with two uh, companies. First tests on, on cheat ensembling were done uh, using a laboratory setup and active alignment. The ensembling method uh, is based on uh, glue approach where drops of glue are used, are used to fit the macro bottle with the uh, photonic chip. The macro bottle was mounted uh, by employing a creeping tool. Field results show that uh, we are able to mount uh, micro bottles where the Q factor were found around 10 to power to 4. However, there exist issues with respect to the adhesive uh, handling and reproducibility. Based on the previous results, we decided to develop a semi automatic ensembling process. An existing ensemble machine was uh, updated uh, for this purpose. 
where a uh, dispensing gripping UV curing methods were defined. Field ensembling tests showed that um, the development of better ensembling samples. Here, the Q factor was only slightly affected. Using the previous ensembling method, we can mount up to four micro bottles. Now, the integration of the macro chip is necessary to transport the sample with the specific side tokens. And a TCEP bonding technique uh, based on microstructures, double sided TCEP tape, was proposed to integrate the macrofluidis with the bottle basset chip. Before bonding, the lateral fibers of the bottle resonator were cut using a laser technique. Then, the adhesive layer was prepared for, bond for bonding post chips. On the left side, uh, we can see the uh, final cut design of this uh, cartridge. Our ensembling process was successfully defined as we can see it in this slide. The optical response of micro bottle was measured in each step. No significant change had been observed. Additionally, we studied the coupling effects between uh, bio-coated micro bottles and wet guys. The influence of the lateral position of bottle respect to the wet guys is minimal, as we show in the left figure. The response in water of this micro bottle showed that one order of magnitude of the Q factor is slightly affected. Nevertheless, the results are still acceptable for the detection of protein binding reactions. In summary, we can uh, easily uh, simulate and fabricate micro bottles where first ensembling tests were done in front of our ICTM. Optimization is still necessary, but this this technique uh, is a potential solution and very suitable for the ensembling of micro, micro bottles, but also uh, for other uh, 3D uh, microstructures. Furthermore, I would like to show that we have uh, developed the readout system of these amazing chips based on uh, micro bottles in this uh, project uh, PolvoSense. I would like to extend a keen invitation to our future uh, webinars. Uh, more information will be available on our website soon. Thank you very much for your attention and now we can start with the uh, live discussion.